Hey, welcome everybody to Arizona Real Estate News. I'm your host, Rick McCone, with Jackie and Roby with Arizona Foothill Century 21 and Pat McMaster's Price Mortgage. How's it going, everybody? Good. Good. How are you doing? Well, it's easier than last week. I had to go to a, uh, um, um, not a holiday <laughs> inn. I had, to go, I had to go to a Hampton Inn and borrow their Wi-Fi so we could get going on this. But I want to show everybody what I'm seeing in numbers. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of going to state the obvious, but there's a couple things in the data that I that I question that I want to go over because uh, that's what I think our channel is all about is we're just kind of questioning things and uh, and trying to figure out what's going rock and rolling. So let's see what's happening here. And here it is. This is our average list price per square foot. Obviously, it's coming down. People are catching on that that they can't get that price. But, you know, the, the mix in listings I want to talk about a little bit because the numbers that we see inside of this is new construction, iBuyers, and investors. And um, we don't have a whole bunch of owner occupies in this mix yet. They're not throwing their homes out at a at an above normal rate. Are you seeing that? Yes, absolutely. I mean, everybody else. So so when I look at the, the list prices coming down, um, who's going to reduce the price quicker, a flipper or owner-occupied? The flipper. They're paying yeah. hard money. Yeah, and I think they're doing it quickly. So we're seeing that start to come down. We have not seen – this is going to get worse because – We've seen the offer pad and the open door numbers. It's about 2,000 homes out of the 17,500 we have. When those hit, this thing's going to nosedive. So I'm waiting for that. But I'm looking at here's the average list price coming down. Here is the monthly average sales per square foot. So this one says our list price is 333 Our sales price is, come on, you can do it, Mouse. It's not giving me to it, but it's. It's below 333. It's sitting there right there at 290 square foot. Then I go to the other Cromford chart, and this is where I get confused. This one shows us at 337 and last year at 335. So it's showing that the 2022 prices are down to 2021. I have a tendency to believe this chart over the last one. I don't think we're down to 2021 pricing. No, I don't well, think so either. Here's where the price cuts occur. See that pink line there? These are daily. Everybody reduces their prices, the majority, on Friday. Mm -hmm. So these come in color. You got orange is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So it goes up. Friday is when the majority of the people lower their prices. Here's the monthly average sales price per square foot. Once again, shows 291. Now, I tried to get a little wonky and say, I've been looking and I'm trying to correlate something that says if if list prices are going down, let me go, um, let me look at last year and go or just go back four weeks and say, let's say I'm at $350 a square foot. What's the close price four weeks later? So in other words, here's the list price and here's the close price. And I couldn't get any kind of a pattern except to say that Quite simply, if listing prices are coming down, close prices are going to come down. But their data that they show on closings over list price is still over 30%. But I don't know what price point that's happening in. But it's it's obvious that prices are coming down. But this thing I found, and this was uh, as we were trying to explain the rate buy down, I think the Crawford Report did it quite easily here. And I've got this new little neat magnifying thing here. Hmm. So they're showing a median price of 475000 with a 10% down payment at 5.8%. So now they're saying, instead of lowering your price $15,000 to attract a buyer, which would get, save the buyer $79, they're saying, why not buy down eight? And it'll save them $265 a month versus 79. So before you do the price reduction, offer this. Now, you're still going to have to appraise so that you got that going for you. It's about 3% of the loan. And then there's a 2-1 buy down, which is 3.6 for the first year and 4.8 for the second. Then it goes up to probably what, Pat, your original rate as a rule? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. It, it'll go down two go, and then go up the next year one and then back to original rate that you qualify. You, they always qualify at the higher rate. 
Yeah, so that's not a bad deal. If somebody else is paying for it, don't be afraid of an adjustable rate mortgage because look how much you save. 514 bucks. So anyway, that's that's one of the tools you can have in your toolbox if you're a seller and you know discuss with your agent and say, you know, hey, let's show you what a buy down looks like. Start thinking like a buyer because that's what you're going to have to do in this market. And we can certainly help you with that. So, Pat, today was the big day where the Fed raised the the rate uh, 0.75 basis points. You, you just took all my thunder. It's all over. You took all my thunder. It's all oh, my God. It's I didn't even know. I got... <laughs> I got up late, so I didn't even hear the news till noon. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, you know, yeah, they it, they moved we up waiting rates. For it, waiting for it to happen, but it really mm -hmm. surprised the bond market, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, once again, buying you know, bond rumors selling fact. Basically, the bonds were up. The uh, four and a half coupon was up 47 basis points. The 10 year bond was basically flat, 2.78. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, that's why the average person on the street, you know, you get these calls like, oh, my God, rates are going up three quarters of a point. You're going to get that typical. We always get that typical, you know, by the average, you know, which I don't blame them. They don't follow it every day. So, you know, kudos to them. But um, obviously it was the largest single meeting. The last two moves have been the largest single meeting move since 1994. So it's been now, now they've made up uh, moves in the last four consecutive uh, meetings. And um, so now the short term rates are two and a quarter, two and a half. I mean, unemployment rate obviously still remaining low. Um, but the problem is, I mean, you've got kind of two, this is my kind of my theory is you got two polling, uh, you know, uh, forces. You got high inflation and you've got, you know, recession talk. And um, those are kind of like um, oil and water, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, when you're talking about economics. And I mean, yeah, basically, let's, Fed, let's, let's, let's expand on that for just a minute. So, in other words, the bond market says, um, it looks more likely than a reset that a recession is coming. And if that's the case, then why raise rates? Right. Am I interpreting mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. I mean, no, the, well, the, the bond market, the bond market is kind of applauding the feds for doing their today. or doing applauding their job that, Hey, they're fighting inflation. This is their, like their little cherry on top. Say, Hey, you're doing a good job. I think. <laughs> um, Cause you know, I mean, the last, you know, you said the last couple months, you know, I, I, I follow the numbers, but I also follow, try to think about the theories and stuff like that. And I, I think, um, you know, now he said the last six, you know, as I've said before, first three, four months, it was, it was just a mi big mystery. What the hell's going on now? We kind of know what's going on. So that's why we're seeing, you saw this right here. I mean, you're seeing the market stabilizing right here. I mean, this is kind of a stable, this is kind of the channel. We're in this channel now. In here, down here, this is we're you know kind of in this channel right now, which is good. I mean, let's see, pull it out six months. You know, we're seeing kind of a base right here. This is bond prices going up, so rates go down. This is the inverse relationship. So, I mean, it's a good thing. But I'm thinking now that um, you know this has been good. But now we got the GDP numbers tomorrow, which I think is going to be kind of that's going to be another. Um, circus show tomorrow because you know but they're talking about the economy slowing so I, maybe it might not be of a big of a surprise but now that we've got these two three quarter point moves i think uh you know we're gonna have probably the next two to three four months we might have a few shocks here and there um you know in terms of rates because now we're past this news of two you know they said all oh, two and three you know two three quarter point moves now they're saying, okay, what's the next game? Be? That's kind of the next black cloud is, well, how much are they going to move it next? And they're kind well, of. That makes sense that right now people have already kind of adjusted to it. They're yeah. Saying, okay, and they're, that, doing, they're doing what they said they were going to do. We get it. Yep. They've already baked those numbers into the cake. But going forward, we're probably going to go, oh, we didn't see that coming. Um, well, or it's, I mean, if, yeah. if the GDP comes in lower than, than what everybody's expecting, then I think. And tell me if I'm wrong, because you're the economist. That puts downward pressure <laughs> on rates, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, like you said, I think the Fed's raising of two. You know, the the last four meetings puts bullets in their because puts bullets in their gun. Because I've I've been talking to some people, and I've been listening. You know, I watch economic shows and talking to a buddy of mine who's a pretty smart guy back in the Midwest. He thinks that we're going to see, you know, this economy. He says shut down. 
That's what he says. He, he goes, you see, you see it in the inventory increases on his, on the wholesale side. I'm kind of hearing word about that too, that these inventory, I mean, you see Walmart, their inventories are increasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, cause they built up on this, uh, of, of the pandemic, they built up their inventories. So, I mean, he starts getting negative readings on the GDP. Um, you know, so there's going to be uncertainty of obviously of what, you know, the speed and the magnitude of the rate hikes anymore. But this is kind of interesting. I want to pull something up. So that's the rates. You know, they've been kind of in this channel, and I think we're going to see a channel here. But remember all the talk about the uh, Fed, you know, the, you know, the, all the, you know, Feds are going to shut down, you know, they're going to, they're going to shut down the buying of, uh, they're going to minimize their buying. This right here, this number, I wish I could tell you. I can't blow it up. Well, I guess I can based on what you had with that thing. It's this right here is March 17th. Maximum, it says right here. I'm just going to go over the numbers. Right here, this is March 17th. Security purchases were in the 182 to $400 million, $416 million. They had a maximum during one day of a $702 million uh, buyback. Wow. This is This is going back. Now, this is July. All right. This, this is one. This is one fifty six two seventeen. So they went from like four hundred million to about two hundred million, and during the day they went from seven hundred million to about four hundred ninety, about two hundred million dollars a day. Uh, this day right here, and I'm just gonna blast through these numbers, but this is a one point three billion dollar purchase during March eighteenth. On this day over here was one hundred eighty million. So that's 1.2 billion less in one given day. This is a four months later. Have you heard a lot? I mean, my point is, have you heard a lot of talk about the feds clamping down on their, you know, they've been talking about it, but they're doing it, but it's really, it's kind of behind the scenes. As I told you a couple months ago, I thought it was going to be, all this stuff was going to be behind the scenes. You're not really seeing the effect of that. Cause based on what I said the other, a couple months ago is that refinances are down 83%. So the whole supply yeah. is gone. I mean, so this kind of, this everybody worried about the mortgage-backed security. They're, the feds are going to stop buying. It I was goes, concerned. I thought it was well, going to have a huge effect. You should have listened to me. You should have listened to me. I, I should have. You yeah. told me. You told me. I told me. you. I'm a, <laughs> you know, P, Pat McMaster's PhD. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, but, I mean, no. so anyway, that's it. That's my two cents worth today. Well, sorry about the applause earlier and uh, dropping the boat on the Fed, but we have Friday. So watch us Friday, three o'clock. So ladies, are you feeling it in the market? Because I'm seeing it. Yes, yes. definitely. So um, uh, Ruby, want, you want to talk about the contract you just got through? Because that was pretty amazing. Actually, yeah. Uh, we wrote a, a contract yesterday evening for the list price is 399000 we wrote the contract for 390,000 with 5,000 uh, seller contribution towards the buyer's closing costs and they accepted it. And we got the uh, home warranty as well. So uh, I was really in disbelief. I was almost embarrassed that I was sending the contract over this way, but um, that's what we did and we got it. No, well, Ruby. It's a real, it's a real it, mental Ru shift now to write those, isn't it? Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. It was that, so that's what we used to do. So Ruby was traveling and I actually showed the client and I had a conversation with the agent prior and I noticed they had been on the market. I think it was, I don't know, 14 days, something like that. Uh, they listed it, made a price reduction immediately, like the fourth or fifth day. I asked the agent and he said, well, you know, we're just trying to be with the market and I might have overpriced it a tad when I listed it. And um, then he told me, he goes, you know, they're motivated. They'd rather get it sold than to wait for the market to come to them. And the agent told me they had had one showing, no offers. It had been on the market almost 14 days, I believe. Um, so I told, I told the client, I'm like, let's be aggressive. Now's the time. And I, and I think, too, this, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, normally this time of year, right when school is starting and all the different districts are starting at different times we always have a little bit of a lull right now anyways as far as showings because everybody's getting ready for school they might be getting that last weekend vacation in so it was perfect timing because you know there was just no activity on that house and i think well, a I'm little bit any activity on a lot of homes in, in no. uh, 
Um, even when I look on the MLS, it's really interesting to see that, I mean, normally, um, you know, when the market was really hot, you would, you know, you'd have that first weekend and then you would come out of it and you would do a, you know, price adjustment if you had to. Chances are you were looking at multiple offers in what, and I'll, I'll go back to 2012 and say, you know, if you didn't sell your house in a week, you might think about it. You might wait two weeks, then you do a price reduction. Well, now the market's softening, but they're still making really fast price reductions. In other words, they're not waiting. To, like I saw one that was 450,000 two days later, 430. Wow. Wow. Like, oh, oh yeah. nobody came in like I thought they would. So good. So there are people out there that still think, <clears throat> put it on. We'll see what happens. Well, there'll be a line at the door. <laughs> Guess what? Not, There's no line at the door. No. Well, when I was looking at showing time, I was randomly going through MLS the other day and just clicking on showing time on certain properties, and it was amazing. Uh, they they were blank. There's right. just. And, and I think part of it too, because I did have a conversation with a few people. They had concerns about what was the Fed going to do today. So I, you know. You should call me. They should have. <laughs> Call Pat. It gets with all the so it, but that shows you the media too. And I saw something the other day on the news that said, it says, and this is key. It says, sales are down, but prices are up. Well, give it another month. I mean, because right. the <clears throat> sales are down for the month of June, but those contracts were written in April and May when prices were up. And mm -hmm. so that's right. the closing data that's showing up now. But that made a really weird news headline. Oh my God, prices are still up and sales are down. No, not really. I mean, that's why I want to show those charts that it, it lags. So mm -hmm. you have to look at the listing price and that's going to equate to a future sales price. But uh, the, the media, I some I think one of these days, I'm just going to do a show just showing channel 12 said this, here's what it actually means, you know. Channel three did this. Here's what that means. I was thinking about that last night with Fox 10 and had a report on and some woman talking about the market. And I was, it was amazing thinking like she's saying this, but we're seeing this. So she's probably not actually out on the street doing what we're doing. Just yeah, and they, they do find a couple, they've got a couple of go-to people I know on channel 12 that they go to, to ask what's going on in the market. Sometimes yeah. they pull this guy. Why are they asking him? So, <laughs> I don't want them to ask me. I don't want to be on TV. <laughs> So <laughs> it, it's very confusing to the consumer. And the thing is, is that there's, to me, almost unnecessary panic because mm -hmm. everybody's used to one market and then forget. It's like people forgot what a normal market is. Yep. You know, it's like they're they're going into absolute panic if day five and six come, which in a normal market, I mean, there would be no concern whatsoever. So, you know, I think people are I, kind of jumping a little bit on the price reductions and panicking a little bit unnecessarily, which well, is going to have an effect as well. Yep. I think, you know, liking it to you're going, we were going 180 miles an hour the last year. And now we're going 100, 110. I mean, right. my, my perspective, this is my broker, my mortgage prediction. I think I, this kind of feels like a lull that we had during mm -hmm. COVID because I mean, once again, I'm looking at from my perspective, this is my 30 seconds worth. There's still a lot of people that would, we're not going to have as much supply because you got 31 billion people under the interest rates. Um, you've got you've got these buyers the last year that have not been able to purchase because they've gotten shoved out of the market. They're still out there. So I don't see, I think people are, this. there's a little dis, you know, discom, discombobulation going on right now. But that's kind of my gut. I mean, people, I think, if they the feds do drop rates, I think uh, next year, I think this is a perfect buying time. You know, just the people start really getting serious about it. Yeah, you know, it'll things will settle down. The sellers will come to more realization. The buyers, I think they have to look at it as a positive. That's my two cents being a yeah. mortgage guy, because like you said, I, I'm seeing that and I'm feeling that that uh, there's the, the crash stuff. I you know, like I said, we've talked about this last year and a half. We we just don't have bad mortgages out there. So. Well, the, that's the whole the, sustainability. The number that I'm seeing that always that piques my curiosity is the fact that, like you said, there's, you know, all these millions of people that just are not going to list their home because they don't have to. So, you know, right now we're, we're cleansing out these yeah. flip, flippings. 
and we're you know and yep. we're, we're and we're in the middle of this. This is open door. Now this is just one flipper open door. Every yep. flipper out there has this chart on their desk. Down here they were listing them, selling them, listing, selling them. Now they're listing them. They're sitting there, and their sales yep. rate is really every flipper in the valley houses. They're going to have to get rid of these. This is going to. Um, um, it's it's not like it's going to be this huge shock wave that's going to pile pricing down, but it's definitely going to put downward pressure down below homes under six hundred thousand dollars. This has to be cleansed out. They can't just sit on this chart. They don't get mm -hmm. to have an expired listing if you're open door. You don't get to have an expired listing if you're a flipper. You're going to have to take a bath and eat it. Yes, some yep. of them may go ahead and try to put a rental in, but once that wave is over, what's behind that? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, our listings are seventeen thousand five hundred. So what's what's behind that? Once the flipping gets through the system and through the wash and the dry cycle, what's yep. left over is are we now sixteen thousand? Because what's driving our prices is is the gap. Mm -hmm. You know, the gap between you know they're saying all these listings are coming on board. No, they're not. See the blue line? Those are the listings coming on every seven days. It's going this way. I mean, the camera. Right? Not this way. So that number is not growing. What's driving the increase of listing is lack of sales down here. Yeah. So we're down to 2,800 and we're putting on uh, right there about, oh, I want to say 4,500 homes. We used to put 4,100 on, 4,100 would go under contract. So that went away. So the gap yep. is there. Until this inverts or the gap gets closer, prices are going to still continue to come down. But the only it, what's going to be normal once the flippers are done sales somewhere still down here, but listing somewhere down there. And that's just one of those other numbers where you're going to say, well, we're just going to have to guess. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it's going to look like. <laughs> I think there's just a lot of confusion in the market with all the way around truly. And a lot of unsteadiness or uneasiness. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons for it too. Like Pat says, his friend says, this this economy could shut down. It could get really, really ugly. There's there's no hiding that. This could get, this could get bad. Um, Plus you know, the elections coming up as well. I, that's that's going to have an effect. I think once I think we get have a past effect. that, huh? That makes people I think that's going to have a hand. positive effect on it. I do. I, mean, I, I do too. I hope. Yeah. But I think we get through that and things settle down. And if rates even stay where they're at, maybe even inch up, up just a tad, or they settle back down a little bit, I think once we get through all this craziness of people trying to figure out what their expectations are or what's going to happen in the future, because no, no, none of us know. I mean, it's thank God for your channel, Rick. It's watching it day by day by day and just looking at the numbers and what's happening. Right. But I have a feeling that things will settle down and we'll go back to a more balanced the market we want, a more well, just kind of steady eddy mar market. Yeah, somebody asked me a question. Where do people think interest rates? I mean, where can I find out where interest rates are going to be, be uh, in a couple of years? And I just said, you can't. <laughs> I, I can't tell you where they're going to be tomorrow. But I think, you know, so you're just going to have to look and you're going to have to guess. I'd say I like those buy down programs. I think if you're a buyer, then put that in your offer. Get Absolutely. That, get your payment down and know what the cap is. It's like what you know, we just showed you that it goes back to today's rate. That's a good loan. You're yep. saving money for three years and it goes back to the rate that's today and you already qualified for it. That's a good product. Now when a job I'll just interject. Loan, go ahead, Pat. I'll interject. I mean, you just gotta be careful. I mean, just uh, just it's kind of a blanket statement. I'm just not gonna re I'll refute you a little bit. Some of the lenders are doing two one buy downs, like I mentioned last week. The rates are higher, so they're buying down. I, I want to start. I want. I want to look at two lenders. The, the lender that's on the top of my pricing list chart to see because some not all lenders have a two-one buy down. Yeah, or they're not really offering it. Yeah, they're not we're starting out there. Where, where, where's my top price? My lowest price lender, and I'll compare it to, you know, ABC lender who's got the two-one buy down because you might want to do a permanent buy down mm -hmm. versus the right, temporary. Right. Yeah, that's I'm 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 more in favor of a permanent buy down, no doubt. I think that's the way the way to go, especially if you got somebody that's thinking about lowering their price of the house ten or fifteen thousand. I think a permanent buy down is the way to go. Another thing that I want to touch on on Friday when we're back, Pat, and that is that example that you sent me of an online lender and the fees compared <laughs> to a non-online lender. Now, 
we have to be careful. We can't say who it is, um, but we can say that it was astronomical, the difference, somewhere around the $20,000 in fees wow. difference between oh my gosh. what what a, what a guy like twenty grand get you versus what, and it's all buried in the detail. And these online lenders, they, they get you with this rate. And they go, yes, here's the rate I can get you today. And then they look and go, well, that rate I quoted, Pat, I'm going to have to layer in all these fees in order to get them that rate. But they, they don't lay it out to where it's really easy for you to see. And mm -hmm. when this was explained to that buyer, she said, oh, my God, I'm going with you. I'm just kidding. I won't say the name, but they've got a very large marketing budget. Yep. Yes, they do. Very large. And uh, um, so... I want to touch on that on Friday. Yep. I want to share the actual number. So line it, redact it like they do on congressional testimony. <laughs> so so <laughs> everybody, I will see you on Friday. I uh, actually, I'll just see fat Pat on Friday. I am heading back up to the Hills for the weekend and uh, I will be back probably Monday night. Everybody I think we night. need to do a field trip and go with you. Oh, Get yeah, out I of this heat. See. All of us crammed in that little fairly <laughs> out. <laughs> I'll bring my pop-up camper. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay, I'm in. Let's do it. Talk to you guys later. Well, well, take care. Have a good one.